there's a growing recognition that REITs present some attractive opportunities. And I think that we'll see more private firms getting into the space. In fact, it's not unusual for us to see some of our private real estate funds selectively take positions in REITs where they see some kind of a value discrepancy. Hello and welcome to The REIT Report. I'm your host, Sarah Borks and Quito. My guest today is Christian Buskin, Senior Vice President and Director of Real Assets at FEG Investment Advisors, an independent, employee-owned investment advisory firm based in Cincinnati. Christian, welcome and thank you for joining the podcast today. Thank you, Sarah. So first of all, could you describe to our listeners um, a little bit about FEG and the services it provides and really who are your clients? Sure. So FEG is an institutional investment consulting firm. We were founded in 1988, so we're celebrating 35 years this year. Over 80% of our clients are nonprofits, primarily endowments, foundations, healthcare organizations. We advise on about $70 billion in assets, and we also manage about $11 billion in discretionary capital. And we assist our clients with manager research, asset allocation, and performance reporting. Our research group is comprised of 25 people, and we cover all major asset classes, including private equity, venture capital, hedge funds, credit. And my area of focus is in real assets, and that's three broad areas, public and private real estate, the whole natural resources and commodities complex, and also infrastructure, both public and private. So that's my role here at the firm. Great. And can you talk a little bit about how you go about structuring real estate portfolios for your clients and where and why REITs fit into those portfolios? Sure. So when we're constructing real estate portfolios, we generally use REITs for a core allocation, and we supplement that with private opportunistic funds. So REITs provide liquid exposure to a broad range of property types. And REITs, as you know, are generally run by management teams with expertise in a a specific property type, whether it's in industrial properties or apartments or hotels. And we believe that there's an opportunity for REIT managers to add value through active management. And that can happen either by sector positioning or individual stock selection. I would note that REITs come with uh, the volatility of the equity market, so that's something that everyone should be cognizant of. But we think they're a great way for clients to get core exposure to real estate. On the private side, our managers are generally doing things that would be outside the range of what REITs are doing. So REITs are not usually in the business of buying distressed properties, for example. Those are the types of things that we see within our private real estate funds. So it differs, but it does provide us an opportunity to enhance returns and target a broader opportunity set than what we might just get within the REIT market. And what are you seeing in terms of REIT performance metrics? And where would you say we are in the current cycle? As everyone is aware, REITs declined by 25% in 2022. And that was in large part due to the Fed raising interest rates. And that was the worst decline in the REIT market since 2008. In terms of where we are in the cycle, I would say that REITs have a lot of bad news baked into their prices at current levels. The same is not true on the private side. So in terms of where we are in the cycle there, broad real estate market, I'd say we're relatively early stages. I think it's also worth noting that REIT leverage, leverage among the REIT companies, has declined significantly over the past decade. So their balance sheets are in better shape than they were heading into the financial crisis of 2008-2009. They also have strong interest coverage ratios. And I would say most importantly, REITs have more fixed rate debt, which is obviously important in a rising interest rate environment. And then the final thing I would mention is that most REITs currently are trading at a discount to net asset value, and that's going to vary by property type. Christian, how have you seen the REIT universe evolve over the years, and do you see potential for further shifts in terms of potential new property types? Yeah, so if you looked at a REIT index or a REIT manager's portfolio 10 years ago, 
you would have seen heavy concentration probably in office and retail. And today, that's going to look very different. Most REIT portfolios, and I would say the index also, have a large weighting in what I would refer to as more niche property types, like or non-traditional property types, like cell towers, data centers, self-storage, and single-family rentals. Also, a lot of industrial as well. And, and most importantly, you don't see a lot of exposure to office in the REIT indexes and in managers' portfolios. So in terms of the shift and other property types that could become part of the REIT universe, I would mention a couple of things. One would be industrial cold storage. There's one cold storage REIT, Maricold, but there could be additional opportunities there for owners of uh, cold storage assets to utilize the REIT structure. Another niche area, which many people may or may not be familiar with, is boat marinas. We're familiar with a group that's been investing in boat marinas in a private structure, aggregating those properties. And I know that they're looking for a way to take that portfolio public in the form of a REIT. So those are a couple areas that I think down the road could be part of the REIT world. This is Sarah Forbes and Keto with a REIT report. Do you know the best strategies for decarbonizing the built environment? Are you interested in learning more about using AI in the workplace? Do you know how to effectively align your DEI targets with your business goals? Learn the answers to these questions and much more at NAUD's REIT Work Sustainability Conference, taking place June 28th and 29th in Las Vegas. Join professionals in sustainability, CSR, communications, DEI, finance, and law for two days of educational sessions, roundtables, and meaningful networking. Register by May 24th to get the early bird rate and save on your registration. Visit go.reit.com forward slash REITWorks REIT report to register. That's go.reit.com forward slash REITWorks REIT report. Now on to the podcast. And Christian, I think our listeners would be interested to know about the process that FEG uses to screen potential investment managers. And also, could you talk about some of the attributes of the successful relationships that the firm has already forged? We look at several factors when evaluating managers. And, and I'd say, first of all, that performance is, is obviously important, but it's usually not the first thing. We place a lot of emphasis on teams and organization and stability and the depth of the team that's managing portfolios. We want to see a high level of conviction. So the way we look at that is a higher weighting in the manager's best ideas and not just tracking the benchmark. We want to see how they differentiate themselves. And most importantly, and probably most challenging, how do they differentiate themselves from other groups out there in the market? And there are different ways that they can do that, but oftentimes it's experience, it's depth, it's resources, groups that have been in the market for a long time. I would say groups that have been through multiple cycles. That's important. Okay. If you think about the REIT market or just the broad real estate market today, we've been in a bull market for a decade and, and, and many people that have come into the market just in the last 10 years haven't been through a downturn. So we want to work with managers that have been through multiple cycles. And then we also look at, at how they manage risk. And a lot of that has to do with back office, uh, administrative things like compliance policies and procedures and other aspects of just making sure everything is buttoned up and being managed correctly behind the scenes. So in terms of long-term relationships with managers in the REIT space, there are groups that we've worked with for over a decade and they fit the criteria that I mentioned. Yeah. We understand that occasionally, given what may or may not be popular in the market, they may go through stretches of relative underperformance. But if they're sticking to their process and philosophy, we're going to be okay with that. Sometimes certain sectors will be in favor or out of favor, and that could impact their performance. But what we want to see is consistency over time. How many relationships would you have going at any given time? I would say currently we have about five or six manager relationships on the public read side. So we're very selective. We're aware of most of the read managers out there in the market. We've talked to them at various times, but you know, I give you an example or two. Sometimes there will be a change in senior leadership 
or there could be issues at the parent company if they're owned by a large organization. So we look at everything holistically, and those are a few of the factors that might come into play in our decision making. But the groups we work with have been in the space for a long time, usually 20 plus years, and they have long-term track records and deep knowledge of the real estate markets. Christian, you touched on this a bit earlier, but I wanted to ask you a bit more about how you see the relationship between listed real estate and private real estate today. Yeah, this is a really big topic. We could talk about this for a long time. As everyone is probably aware, there's been a huge disparity between public and private real estate over the past year. I mentioned earlier that REITs were down 25%. Depending on which metric you look at, private real estate was either flat or down single digits. So so a wide disparity there over the past year. I would say that REITs probably overshot to the downside a bit. And so the real numbers are somewhere in between what the private funds are reporting or what the private indexes are reporting and what we saw in the REIT market. But the challenge is that transaction activity has dropped off significantly. There hasn't been a lot of price discovery. So that's another factor. But we expect that private real estate valuations will trend lower in the coming quarters. This is not unusual. There's always a lag between the public and private markets, but ultimately they tend to converge. So it's something that we watch very closely and try and be cognizant of when we're looking at the real estate market. So it's, a, it's an important issue. Christian, we've covered lots of different topics, but is there anything else that you feel that we should touch on today? A couple of things. One, I would say there's been a lot of talk and a lot of headlines around the office sector. And clearly, there is a fair amount of distress in the office market today. But I would add that you can't paint all of real estate with a broad brush. So, for example, while certain office markets are facing distress, major metropolitan markets like New York, San Francisco, Los Angeles, for example, other markets are actually doing well. One of our private real estate managers owns three office properties, two in Florida, one in Atlanta. And those properties are doing very well. The office market in many Sunbelt states is pretty strong. So despite what you see in the headlines, you can't paint everything with a broad brush. There are differences between markets. The other thing I would mention is that there's a growing recognition that REITs present some attractive opportunities. And I think that we'll see more private firms getting into the space. In fact, it's not unusual for us to see some of our private real estate funds selectively take positions in REITs where they see some kind of a value discrepancy. We recently saw a large private real estate manager announce that they're raising a pool of capital specifically to target REITs. So I think we could definitely see more private funds playing in the market. There's a lot of dry powder on the sidelines, 300 billion plus in private real estate, and all that capital has to be deployed. And I think some of that will end up perhaps going into the REIT market. Christian, thank you so much. Really appreciate your time today. Thank you, sir. And to our listeners, if you enjoyed this episode of the REIT Report, please subscribe or leave a review on your favorite podcast platform. (music) 